Folks at home, welcome back to the Crimson Oak Pond. It took us a couple of months to build it, a few more months to fill it up, and if you missed the previous video, we finally stocked it with fish. So we've only stocked it with bait fish so far, and we put in 6,000 bluegills and 6,000 fathead minnows. But over the next couple of weeks, we're going to be focusing heavily on water quality because we want to have the water conditions perfect when we put the bass in so we'll have a bunch of happy fish swimming around. And this week, we're going to dive into oxygen and specifically dissolved oxygen because even though fish live underwater, they still breathe oxygen. So we've had our water levels tested and everything checks out good now, but you typically don't see problems until the summertime. So there's two basic methods of adding oxygen to a pond, and one is aerators and waterfalls, and then the other method is diffusers. So we're going to be adding a waterfall to this pond, just like we did with our backyard pond, but that's not going to come till later this summer. And waterfalls and aerators basically add surface level oxygen to the top level of a pond. But today we're going to focus on adding oxygen to the bottom layers of pond by putting in some diffusers. And for those of you who are unfamiliar with them, it's basically like a bubbler and you sit it on the bottom of the pond and it creates something called destratification, which is basically just like mixing or churning all of the water in the pond up. And there's a few other really good benefits that you get from adding a diffuser. So in some ponds you have harmful gases that are sitting at the bottom of the pond and when you add the bubbles that carries the gases to the surface where they can escape into the atmosphere. And another benefit is that you typically have a lot of fish waste and other organic material sitting on the bottom of the pond. So when you add the dissolved oxygen deep in the pond, it breaks those down quicker and improves the water quality. But the last, and in my case, most important reason is that more dissolved oxygen equals more fish. So typically in ponds, you wanna add your diffusers to the deeper areas of the pond that are six feet and deeper. And then you can add those surface level aerators and waterfalls to the shallow areas of the pond. So our diffuser locations are going to be where those three asterisks are. And then we also have a well pumping in from the bottom, which also acts a lot like a diffuser. And you can see that area we have marked off over by Clyde's Cove. That's where we're going to add the waterfall later this year. All right, folks, time to create some bubbles. I'll give you a quick rundown of our diffuser system. So we have three separate diffusers. And basically, you just run an air line in right here. And bubbles come out of each of these. And then this sits down on the bottom of the pond. We have an air compressor system here. This is a cabinet-mounted air compressor system. It's got a built-in fan. And we're basically going to mount this box to a 4x4 post and keep it up off the ground. And we also have some more decoys. So I got some wood ducks this time. And it's just like with all our brush piles out there. We're going to use the decoys to mark where we put the diffusers. But also, if we ever want to move them in the future, which is recommended, we can just go over and grab one of those duck decoys at the surface and then use the rope to pull it to a different part of the pond. So I got 500 feet of this weighted aeration tubing. It's just heavy piping that's weighted so it'll sit down there on the pond bottom and not get in the way. So we're gonna mount the air compressor right here and then dig a trench right up here to the pond because I wanna bury the air lines because you know we have those mice and don't want them chewing on our air hoses. All right, I just got a small trench dug and a four x four post mounted right here. All right, I got the compressor mounted. Now we are gonna start running the hose up the dam. But I've got a plan. I don't know if it's a good plan yet or not, but I got some air hose bundled up here in the boat. I've got it strung out down this bank. I'm gonna back the boat out and it's about 12 feet deep right out in that area. So I'm gonna use the paracord to lower it down and whenever I get it set on the bottom, I'll cut the paracord off at the surface and tie the decoy on. High winds definitely do not help. Again, this is probably a two-man job, but we gotta make do with what we have. All right, I decided to pull the long one over here since I had some excess hose. So I'm over here by the drain pipe. I've got everything real tight here. So now I'm just gonna ease it down with this rope. All right, got the first one installed. Wood duck marks the spot. All right, I just turned the first one on and everything's looking good. And that decoy is perfect there because they actually do recommend moving these around the pond throughout the year. So I can literally just go grab that decoy string and drag it anywhere I want to. 
So I may not get to do the other two this afternoon because I've got one other cool project I want to get knocked out before that sun sets. All right, let's talk about my next project. So one of you guys commented and said that I should get an owl house. And to be honest, I didn't know that owl houses existed. But I did a little research and it turns out that owls don't actually like building nests. So they'll typically reuse another animal's nest, whether it be squirrels or big birds. But I also know how much they love hanging out in these small trees that I planted. And they're definitely not big enough for them to be sitting in. So I wanted to build them a little perch. And this house actually works out perfect. I'm gonna cut this broom handle and mount it there like that so even if they're not using the house for their babies they can still have a nice perching spot and we also got some bedding down there to go down in the bottom but now the next project is we're going to do some more nighttime time lapses so you guys have seen me use a similar anchor system to this in the past we needed to pump some water on the back side of the dam over there so we used it to power up our pump that worked out great but anchor came out with an even heavier duty powerhouse that's 512 watt hours it's got the three usb plugs it's even got the usb c which is nice 420 volt outlets a display with some information a car socket so it should be able to power up this gopro for days if not weeks so we're going to get a bunch of cool shots of the moon the deer feed but one thing I'm really interested to see is it is mating season for the owls and you know they've already picked this area so they will be nesting somewhere here around the pond and hopefully I can get them to nest inside the house and then we can put the GoPro in there and maybe even do some live streams which would be really cool and have some little baby owls but we're gonna get everything set up I'm probably gonna mount their house somewhere back here around these trees that's where they enjoy hanging out and look at there the moon's already out we got clear skies should make for a perfect setup for a night lapse all right I think it turned out good I put it right over here beside the tree that they've been hanging out in got them a perching spot and a nesting box we just started the time lapse got some corn out excited to see how this one turns out all right we got some deer coming out right at dark looks like mostly does but sometimes you don't necessarily know for sure this time of year because a lot of the bucks are losing their antlers and it is a full moon tonight and this is what they call the snow moon because it occurs in february and that is the snowiest month of the year but the new owl house is lit up pretty good so we should be able to see if either of them come out and look at there one of them finally popped up and they're actually sitting on top of the house instead of the perch or inside of the house but they are probably just using it as a lookout post because that's when they do most of their hunting at night uh, but whenever you see that bright star i don't know if that's the north star or what but whenever that big bright star comes out you always know the sun's coming up right after that and we got a frost on the ground it was just below freezing last night deer still moving a little bit this morning Let's take a quick look from the other camera angle. I believe that's Hooter, the smaller owl, and it looks like he likes his new spot. I think that the corn that we put out to attract the deer also attracts the mice, and that's why he likes this area so much. But look at there, and there's the other owl that we call Al Capone flew up there. And man, you gotta love it when a plan comes together. I can't believe they both flew up there on the new owl house. Which I have to say is a promising sign that we may have little owl babies here before long. So I bought the largest owl box that they had, but if any of you are familiar with what owls like nesting in, let me know if I need a little bit bigger box. I know that with duck houses, you want as small as entrance as possible to keep the predators out, but I don't know if you have to worry about predators in an owl house. All right, we're going to do one more night lapse to see what comes out again tonight. Got the full moon back out again, and there's another good shot of both of them back on top of the owl house. So while we watch the rest of this time lapse, I want to talk about one of the next projects, and that is adding vegetation to the pond, and that is underwater vegetation as well as shoreline vegetation and trees. So the biologist was really adamant about not adding any kind of vegetation that would multiply and take over, because you do a lot of work to get the pond parameters set up, and down here in the south we have so much sunshine and warm weather that vegetation can just get out of hand quick. So hopefully some of you pond owners can give me some feedback and leave some suggestions below because there are certain plants like cattails that look really good but they can take over the pond. And also I know from personal experience things like lily pads. They look great but they multiply really quickly. So if you guys know of any types of plants that you've successfully put in your pond or bodies of water but don't multiply and spread rapidly, leave me some comments and feedback down below. 
because as soon as we get done with this last bit of cold weather, we're going to be going in with some shoreline plants and possibly underwater vegetation. And there's another look at that bright star coming again, so we know the sun's right behind it. So I took some screen captures, and here's a few of my favorite. A spike checking out the time-lapse camera, and a buck looking at what seems to be a shooting star, although it's most likely just a plane. And then one of the owls sitting on top of their new house at sunrise. Alright folks, back out here, all the corn is gone. I just stopped the time lapse. I did three full days of it, and the anchor still has about 85% battery life. So I definitely recommend a battery pack for projects like this out here in the country. I'll put a link down in the description below so you can check them out. And I think the next time lapse I may set up is out there in that field of sorghum and see what comes through it at night. I was able to get one more installed. So now I've got one there and one there. I got the two deepest ones covered. The next one will go right out here. Have to finish that one up in the morning. So check this out, folks. We have one of our subscribers named Jody send this out to us. We didn't ask him to make it. He just sent it because he was enjoying the pond build videos. But it's a water gauge and you can set it on top of a drain pipe or right there at the surface of the pond level. And then as that water drops, as you can see, the difference in pond level there but i thought that was really cool big shout out to jody i think what we're going to do is take it and mount it to the side of the shade shack over there i got some nice four by four posts in the water we'll put that right at the top so just this part right here will be sticking out and it's definitely going to be a nice addition to the crimson oak pond so now that we've got the bait fish stocked in the pond i've been noticing a lot more bird activity I believe this is an egret, but it may be a species of crane. You guys can let me know if I'm wrong down in the comments below. But he's been stopping by the last hour of daylight every day for the past week and cruising along the banks hunting those bait fish. And for those of you that have been subscribed to the channel for a while, you know we have a long history with birds like this, but in the past it's always been big blue herons that would fly in every winter and try to eat Bonnie and Clyde and our other pets that are in our backyard pond. We've had some really close calls, but so far, all of the fish have managed to escape them. Oh, looks like he finally got one. Looks like we now have 5,999 minnows. And here's a cool shot of a hawk flying over the egret. So the next guy that I've noticed hanging around is called a comorant. And luckily, I've only seen just this one because they can come through in huge flocks and literally devastate a pond. I think each comorant can eat up to like a pound and a half or two pounds of fish a day. And they're really good at diving down eating fish. So it wouldn't hurt my feelings if this guy does not come back. So I was walking around the edge of the pond looking for some of those fish and I noticed we had some eggs. And I'm guessing that this is probably some sort of a toad egg. Every spring we have the toads come in the backyard pond and lay eggs and create thousands of tadpoles. But I had never really seen them grouped up like this, so if you guys know what type of eggs these are, let me know in a comment down below. But we have seen some frogs and toads around the pond, so I'm guessing that's probably what it is. And I finally did see one lone bait fish hanging out down here in the deep end. And he can enjoy swimming around freely throughout the pond now because there's no predators, but it won't be long. So if you missed the last video, I went out and got this miniature squirrel picnic table so they can sit right there and have a little feast. Put out peanuts, seeds, a big variety of nuts, and believe it or not, a little mouse cleaned house. So I'm moving it to a different location. We got some big oak trees right here, deer field right here. So let's see if we can lure Foxy out. So speaking of Foxy, I actually saw him when I was driving into the farm a couple of days ago. And he was out there eating what's left of the remaining peanut crops. Because he still hadn't found our little picnic table. But one funny thing he likes to do is race me. And it looks like Foxy's still undefeated. And it looks like a young buck passed right by. Didn't even smell the peanuts. Oh, it looks like a raccoon has found the table. This ought to be interesting. 
<laughs> I can only imagine what's going through his mind. He's probably thinking, man, this is the first peanut buffet I've ever seen. Now he's checking out the squirrel picnic table. I'm sure he'll eat that corn too. Oh, now a friend showed up. This is about to get really interesting. I like how they use both of their hands to crack the peanuts open. Now for an update on the black coyote. So when you're watching the game cameras and all the deer get spooked, you always know a coyote's coming out. And this particular black coyote is rare, but he has been showing up to the farm a lot lately. So I asked you all to help us name him, and Pink Flamingo is the winner of that contest. He said staying on the Bonnie and Clyde theme, every prison needs a warden, so I kind of like that. So Pink Flamingo, send me your address and I'll get you a package sent out. All right, now it is time to feed Mr. Moby. I hope y'all enjoyed this video. Make sure you're subscribed. We're going to be adding the pet bass to the pond really soon and you don't want to miss out on it. Thanks everyone for watching and we will see you all next time.